Well, hi there. Welcome back. This has been an exciting week. What can I say? We've been working very hard to make these videos once a week. If you like that kind of uh, momentum, leave us a comment or share the video or give us a like. It's highly appreciated. In this video, we're recreating a lost earring, which is a situation you come across quite frequently as a, as a goldsmith. Fun stuff because we have the exact measurements. The idea of doing this type of work is to create an earring which you couldn't tell which one we replaced. That, that would be the pinnacle of what you're trying to do. As per usual, the very first thing we're going to do is to take the measurements. This I do with manufacturing, pre-design, and actually starting the job. The pin, the length of the pin, I'm talking about the wires that are used for the basket, and even the, the scroll at the back, because we are making the scroll as well. You could buy these possibly, but there's no fun in that. We like to have fun in the workshops. I'm starting off with a scroll, and the very first thing I'm going to do is to produce a piece of 18 karat and roll it up to the measurements that we have for the existing scroll. By rolling it absolutely flat, but always and always keeping it just a fraction, I'm talking about an incredibly small fraction higher than the thickness that we're working with. And that is because you've got to keep in mind that we're going to be doing a little bit of sanding, a little bit of polishing on it. So we want to end up on the thickness. So an example, if we're working on 0.5 millimeters, you want to maybe go up to 0.6 millimeters. The process is as follows. You flatten the material, and remember by rolling it and compressing it, we have to anneal it to release the stresses out of the material. Once we've gotten the flat surface, I need to create the round circle, the disc. So what I'm doing is I'm gluing the existing earring onto the piece of prepared material and that way I could use that scroll on the other side to hold it uh, once I've cut it out to shape it and I've also got a good reference to cut around. I use in this case actually a uh, glue burst, uh, the, the red one. I've worked off the edges around the diameter of the existing scroll. The back part of it now I'm working off with sandpaper and I'm continuously going smaller with uh, the sandpaper and I think I might have started with a 400. Usually I end up on about a two and a half or a three thousand. Preparing the surface for, for the scroll part which I'm going to be making. A simple way of removing the two pieces of metal which has been glued with super glue and it's just to give it a bit of heat uh, around about 100 degrees Celsius and the glue will just burn straight off. That preserves the two pieces beautifully and there's no damage done. So the next thing that I have to make are the little heart shape parts of the scroll which fold at an angle around and its purpose is for the pin to come through and then to clamp the pin as it's gone through. Now if I'm taking a square bar which I've been working with, you first want to compress your three millimeter square down to uh, a thickness that would be more appropriate for rolling out to achieve 0.4 millimeters and to also reach your your width that's necessary. Once you've done the strip on the appropriate thickness, as we said, take the flat piece of material, you curl the ends inwards, and then you cut it exactly in the middle, close it slightly, cut it again, close it slightly, and you only have to cut it sort of three quarters in for the metal to respond. So if you've got a flat piece of metal and you cut it three quarters down and you bend it up slightly until it touches again, put another saw blade through that until it touches again, cut another saw blade through that until it touches again. You have a very equal way of bringing it up and it's very controlled. And you can actually see exactly when you get the right angle. You continue the curl at the top and you bring it together. So obviously where you've cut it and you've created your angle, there's a need to solder the bottom section over here. And once you solder the bottom section over here and you've got your little heart shape, uh, you, you then turn it around and where it makes a V at the other side, you put a flat, a flat file over that so that you can balance it on the little plate that you've created. You've got your shape, you've soldered the inside, you've flattened the bottom. Now it's time, because you've turned it, that you've got some distortion on the ends of this heart, so the side profile. You're continuously turning your product and filing just a few files, turn it again, just a few files, keep judging it, keep looking at it, keep measuring it. Uh, try and stay always above your final product. If you see it's going sideways or something like that, stop, go and have a cup of coffee or tea, rather take your time with it and cautiously approach it. That's too much information, don't you think, Demaya? Well, I like it because I, I like it for beginners. It's for beginners. I'm not telling professionals what to do here. 
<laughs> we've taken the, the flat part, we've sweated it. I've explained all about sweating in our previous episode. So the next step is to take the measurement of the pin. And once you've got the measurement of the pin, we know what size hole we need to create at the bottom of the uh, scroll. And then from there onwards, small ball phrase or something just to mark it, and then take a small drill and then enlarge the drill size until you get to the point where the wire uh, fits comfortably through it. It needs to be just a fraction bigger than the wire. It needs to be no small, uh, no bigger than that. Uh, we just need to free movement from the wire as it passes through the disc. And then once it passes through the disc, your heart shaped scroll on the other side will do the rest of the, the work. Once you've got the hole in the bottom of the plate, at the top where the two hearts come together, where they actually join, find the center mark and drill a hole through there. Now the hole that you're drilling through the top is not a hole that's going to pierce the metal, but it's actually just a hole to create a guide for the pin to come through. If we're talking about 0.4 millimeters of, of, of thickness on the scroll, then you're probably gonna go just one third into the metal thickness. And then the basket, creating the basket is really just following through from the example. You find something in the workshop to make the O-ring the right size. Now we know what thickness wire it is, and the other thing that I can tell by the example earring is what the diameter, the inside diameter is. So all you need to do is find something in your workshop that has that diameter. I happen to have a little piece of metal that had the exact measurements, which was four millimeters in this case. And I then wrap it around, I wrap the metal around it a few times so I can create a few O-rings, remove that and just cut through with a very small saw bring it back together, solder it, and we're done with the O-ring with the diamond rests on. Now you've got to go with the four opposite points and create a small groove in the outside of the, of the O-ring that you've created. And that's going to help because by the time we bring our wires in, the wires are going to slip into those grooves. I've bent the wire shape for the first two claws, the first two opposite claws from each other in the same gauge or the same radius as the example. With the grooves in the actual wire it's quite simple to bring it up to that point then making sure that the bottom of the earring in relation to where the wire sits is exactly the same as the example and by the time you come up to the top here the grooves are holding it nicely and you can gently solder it to secure the wires onto the side. The second wire coming in it's quite easy, you're gonna do exactly the same, but by the time you're coming up from the bottom, you're gonna have this wire in the middle that's giving you a bit of a problem. So we just cut through exactly in the middle at the bottom and then slide this one in like a puzzle piece. Now cutting you, the cut you're making is exactly the same width and diameter as the wire. So by the time it comes up, it all joins like a nice cross at the bottom. You secure the top areas. Once you're done with that, you turn it around and there where the four wires cross over, you secure it with a little bit more solder there as well. Once you've got the basket constructed, you bring the pin right to the top, you solder that on, and then our earring is basically done. Remember, the pin needs to be slightly longer. I wouldn't just jump in there and solder it on an exactly the same length because so many things can go wrong. We need to now trim the, the pin at the back to be exactly the same size as the other one. And on the other one, as the pin comes through, typically you get a little notch at the top of the earring as it goes through the traditional style butterfly or scroll. In this case, because of the heart shape that comes around, we create a little rounding, like all the way around the pin at the top. The very last thing to do for me now is to clean it up. I first do a pre-polish because it gives me access inside the actual earring. And once I've done that, I take it to the setting desk right behind me. I'm sure I've dealt with that before, but if you guys wanted me to show you the set, setting method, I'm happy to do so as well. And if you've been working with all the sandpapers and all the cleaning all the way through, cleaning up once again is an absolute pleasure. We make these videos really just to show people coming into the trade or people that are already in the trade a different option or a way to make it. We're not saying this is the only way, but this is the way that's worked for us. We appreciate your, your input. We appreciate you following through and thank you very much for watching the video.